We're talking about adding aesthetic procedures to usually an already established practice uh, or creating a new practice. Uh, why would you consider aesthetic procedures within a new practice? Uh, and basically it comes down to in the medical model of uh, this reimbursement that's declining as we go through practice as well as our patients are aging with us. So there's an increased demand in the anti-aging business. Uh, and physicians have patients already. You don't have to do any work marketing to your patients. Your patients are right there in your waiting room. You don't have to so, you know, go out and put out an ad in the paper or anything like that. Uh, and all of the technologies, the injectables, the lasers, have become so much safer that now they're capable of being done even not by physicians. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about the NEO, but the specific laser treatments uh, can be done by physicians and extenders, can be done by medical assistants, again, depending on your state laws. It can safely be done by uh, even physician extenders. And the idea is to attract new business and a new cash business to sort of get out from the, under the umbrella of where medicine is heading with this very managed kind of confined space into more um, uh, sort of liberal things that you can do with your practice. In 2008, I, can, I gave out surveys, anonymous surveys, to every patient who walked in the door. And uh, it took a couple months, but I actually got 108 respondents uh, who actually sat there and filled out all the questions on my survey. And I basically asked the patients, hey, you know, I do OBGYN. What do you think if I started doing all these other procedures? So these were the results from my study, and I found it very, very interesting, and that's where we've sort of gotten to actually talking scientifically to, uh, to people and physicians and practitioners about, hey, this is a thing you can do within your practice. Um, we found that 49% uh, said that aesthetics were no different than what you were already doing. You take care of women, you take care of uh, medical issues, you can take care of Botox, you can take care of fillers. There was no dividing line that magically was there on the patient perception. Uh, and that 53% were more likely to buy or uh, have the aesthetic procedures because you offer them. These are patients who are not going to go out and seek the procedures if you didn't necessarily have it in front of them. They weren't going to go to a plastic surgeon's office or a spa. They were here, they were comfortable in your office. They said, oh, why don't I try doing that? 73%, um, so even more patients than actually would consider doing a procedure would actually refer a friend for a cosmetic procedure, which I found very interesting because even those who w thought that the aesthetic procedures were uh, you know, not necessarily a good idea were still referring friends. Um, then the biggest question that I always get asked and you know, that we, th we struggled with is, hey, you know, if you go in this direction with your practice, is your practice going to suffer? And from the patient perspective, it didn't. Uh, patients were really thought that the quality of care didn't change over those years that we sort of changed the practice. And this is, of course, what everybody thinks is in the back of your mind is, are you just doing it for the money? And your patients trust you. They don't think you're doing it for the money. They think you're uh, offering new procedures, you're offering safe procedures, and uh, they're not thinking the worst about why you would add aesthetic procedures to your practice. How do you market this to patients? I think this is sort of the biggest hurdle when you go from sort of a medical model where everything's referral and everything's insurance to now more of a cash basis where things are word of mouth or you're trying to get the name out there. Do you have to spend a lot of money? Do you have to do this? Do you have to do that? And basically, according to this study, and I'll tell you the same thing in my practice, you really don't have to do, spend anything. Uh, and really, you can do all of it within your own practice. You already have your patients. They're already there. They trust you. So this is what uh, I sort of think schematically about how your practice sort of grows with this sort of model is you have your core practice of primary care OBGYN and how you get patients into the core practices however you've done it in your own practice or however you've uh, you've been doing up till now, which is that you get referrals, word of mouth, insurance companies, people come because they know you're a great doctor. And you start offering cosmetic procedures to those same patients. And those patients sort of go through and they become your primary care patients, your cosmetic patients. So they come in for a routine sort of health visit and they get their Botox. They come in for um, one pr uh, thing and they leave with another product. Uh, so, and they, as I said, they'll refer friends and family just for the cosmetic procedures. Those cosmetic patients will become your primary care patients and so on. And uh, the most interesting thing that I've found is that 
I'll get now doctors who refer to me will actually come in for cosmetic procedures because patients will go back to tell their primary referring doctors, hey, you know, I look so great. I had, you know, this great treatment and the doctors are coming in for treatment. So uh, as you sort of offer a quality product, people will talk about it. And likewise, where the laser fit in is you do this great job doing one procedure and patients will say, well, I have this sunspot right here and do you do laser hair removal for the bikini? And they'll start asking you about other procedures and to say to them, no, we don't really do that is almost like how can I lose that that patient to somebody else and I think that's where the Neo fits in and Aralace fits in really nicely for my practice uh, especially but for every practice because it offers so much flexibility in what you can do you can't walk into this and then change your mind as you go along you have to sort of make it a consistent plan uh, so creating a price menu uh, get the training and with the lasers and Aralace they do an excellent job training uh, on site they bring in a laser someone will come and train you at your site if you need more training there's always more training available you have to train your staff in thinking in a different way uh, talking about the different procedures that you have in your uh, in your practice as I said when we did the photo facials I just wanted that time where they were doing the photo facial for them just to talk about everything else they could think of so let's talk specifically about lasers. Why is laser so special? Well, first of all, the, the catchphrase of laser is always very special. People want to get laser treatments even if there's another treatment that's non-laser that works just as well. There is a perception that laser works better for pretty much everything. But actually, for certain procedures, laser does work better than everything else. And I'm going to go into the scientific data about that. But um, the, from the patient side, the patients really do believe that lasers are the best. Uh, they are very safe and easy to implement. We're going to show you how great this laser is, how non-painful it is. And you can add in complementary procedures to all of the other things that are on that list. And laser kind of fits in that list very very, very well. Reps walk in with this huge box and say, okay, well, this laser will do this and this and this, and by the way, it's 180,000. Uh, I started to think, okay, well, what am I really looking for in a laser? And again, I think the versatility, being able to treat all different kinds of skin types and all different types of procedures. But for me, the most important thing was safety. We have two other lasers, and I would have to fire the laser every time. So getting someone else to fire the laser and have it be safe in someone else's hands was paramount. For me, it was the safety was the biggest concern. And then gentle treatment. This laser is incredibly uh, painless, if you can call a laser that. Um, in our older lasers, we had ice packs, we had numbing creams, we had gels. This one, you don't need anything. The economics, affordability, and compact. I mean, my office is in Manhattan, so where pr space is a real premium. So the fact that I can move this from room to room and do the treatments in multiple different rooms, you can even move it from office to office, is really just an incredible advantage. I know I could fire it on anybody. Doesn't matter what they look like. Any skin type, anybody, and I'm not going to hurt them. It's very safe for non-physicians uh, and patients are very happy uh, because they're not, there's no significant downtime, there's not a lot of pain. Uh, and then because the laser is more affordable, you can sort of work your pricing accordingly and your profitability becomes much, uh, comes much quicker. So if you want, you can always contact me by email or by phone. Uh, it's better by email. Uh, and you can, we can you know, go over things. I always invite people to come to my office because I think once you see sort of what we've sort of stuck into my office, because I still really do OBGYN primarily, and then we've added on all of these other services. I think that that makes more sense to some people. So we've had a lot of people come play with the laser in our office. We've had a lot of people just come by and sit down and talk. Uh, so my door is open.